Good morning and welcome to today's IGTV. Where are your manners? I mean, uh, I don't talk to you like that, so why are you talking to me like that? Does this sound familiar with your teenager? And now you're saying to them, um, excuse me, we use please and thank you here. We use basic respect. We don't treat each other like they're, you know, yesterday's news and that's not what I'm doing for you, so why are you doing that for me? Okay, um, if this is sounding familiar to you, this is the one you're gonna wanna watch. Um, so today's IGTV is based on a comment I got from a parent, which I'll go over in a minute. And I think this is really common. Um, so I wanna explain why this happens and, and w the way that you're thinking about it that's actually what we were taught is totally backwards completely backwards to changing this pattern with your teenager so you get a little bit more manners and a little less spice. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Okay, thanks for jumping in everybody. It's so good to see you. If you're here on Instagram, I would love the follow and if you're here on YouTube, I'd love a subscribe. Okay, my name is Allie Payne and I am a certified life coach, certified relationship systems coach. I'm one of only 70 people in Canada to hold both designations. I was a very troubled teen and spent decades uh, in therapy and um, healing before I became a parent. I've raised two sons who are now adults. And thankfully, um, I've had the opportunity in my work to empower thousands of parents to end the painful disconnection, the baffling blowups, and the stressful silences to build relationships based on mutual trust and respect and genuine connection to have their healthy and lasting relationship while still being the parent. Know what I mean? Okay, so, um, all right, so let's jump into this. Um, I wanna read you this comment from Katie, gorgeous mama, who made a comment on my post, and we're gonna, we're gonna unpack this, okay? So Katie wrote, um, I wrote a, sorry, I, I posted a reel the other day about when your teenager blames you for everything, right? Because they do. They blame you for everything. This is all your fault. Like this piece of hair that's really pissing me off. Um, this is all your fault and they blame you for everything. Okay, so that's what Katie's comment came from, was feeling like it's always about the blame. This is great and I would love your input on where the fine line is between actually teaching manners and how to speak to other people, practicing basic respect at home versus creating that emotional safety for them all the time. Because I know like parents nowadays are like harped on about, you have to create emotional safety. You have to like, I get it. Mm -hmm. And my children have a little bit more special needs um, than many children emotionally. So there is a space of it not appropriate to snap our heads off every single time we try to communicate in the most basic way. And I'd like to hear your idea of asking what they need right now, but then what do I do? especially when they scream, I don't know at you. Okay, so Katie, love your comment because this is very, very common. So I've got my notes here, so I'm gonna be looking at my book. Um, so basic respect and manners, right? I mean, I know you're all here because you're already amazing parents. So um, you start when they're young, right? You start when they're young with like basic, like pleases and thank yous and, and you know, asking kindly and when someone speaks to you, you don't just like ignore them. You're like, ex like somebody spoke to you. Could you please provide like a basic response? Even if I don't feel like talking right now, just teaching them how to basically human, right? You're teaching them how to human when they're young and um, it's installing like this foundation of basic respect and manners. Yes, am I the only one? I know you did this too, right? When your kids were young. Like, and when I say young, I mean prior to puberty, prior to that massive like explosion in their brain, massive explosion. Um, so you think you're getting somewhere with them as a child because they're relatively compliant, right? Yeah, Brian, they're relatively compliant, relatively friendly. Of course, kids talk back, why? Mm, because kids, this is prior to puberty, kids are experimenting with things they hear other people say. So kids will backtalk because they're experimenting with 
they don't know necessarily what things say, what things mean. And so they'll like say things you're like, excuse me, we do not use that in this house. Uh, and they're experimenting with influence, etc. That That's kind of kids. Now, the moment that your teenager hits puberty and their brain explodes from the inside, right? Um, it is this back talkness is multifaceted why it happens okay and I'm, I'm gonna go over some of that okay so if this sounds familiar I just want to again assure you you are in the right place so you're trying to be respectful you're trying to model things like like Katie is saying like but where's the line of you know emotional um, being an emotionally safe place, which I know like in our generation, we really judge as like, oh, you're raising snowflakes, like, oh, lots of room for their emotions, but they're just walking all over you. Like, pff, that's hardly parenting, you know, mm, to say doormat on your forehead. I know, I know, I get all the things. It's okay, we're gonna walk through this. So now you're trying to, to expect the same um, basic foundation of, of respect and, and manners that you taught them when they were a child, when they were learning to human, right? But now they're learning to adult. And it's very different. Learning to human is basic skills, basic language, basic emotions. Now they're learning to adult. And their brain is literally becoming a far more complex computing machine over, you know, three, five, 10 years, it's not a big deal. Um, and they're growing all new hardware. Their brain is trying to write all new software at the same time. So it's a bit of a hot mess in there, okay? The, the harder you try with your teen to, to get them to be polite and use manners, the worse this is gonna get. The worse this is gonna get, okay? so. You're trying to, now this is my other question for you is what are you modeling? Because if you're like me, you were taught to model manners until someone doesn't model them for you. Does that sound familiar? You were probably taught, that's what I was taught. I, my parents were regulated and showed me respect and manners until I got spicy and disrespectful, and I did. I was a five chili spice teenager, okay? But then they had full permission to be unregulated and stop modeling the exact thing that I needed in that moment, right? So if you're doing this with your teen, you're modeling regulation, and you're modeling manners, and you're modeling respect so long as they are respectful to you. But when your teenager stops being respectful to you, do all the wheels fall off? <laughs> I know it's like super hard, but I'm just asking like, what, what are you? Okay. So your teenager goes all spicy um, and they're not being respectful perhaps or not using basic manners like please and thank you. And you know, Hey, you know, that hurt my feelings or would you mind all of the nice respectful language, right? Um, and Oh, I'm glad that landed for you. I'm glad that landed for you. Um, so your first response because of what, how you were raised, if you're anything like me, and again, this isn't about our parents being like bad people. Our parents did not have any of this psychology, this information, this training, just like we didn't have training, right? For any of this. So don't be dogging your parents about what, what you learned, okay? You are responsible for your behavior right now, okay? So um, based on what you got, which I just mentioned, I'm just looking at my notes here, um, as long as your teenager is respectful to you and modeling, mirroring back the respect that you believe you're giving them, we're all good. But the moment your teenager doesn't give you that same respect and, and manners that you're, that you are giving them, it triggers your brain. Your, you, so your teenager starts there, like maybe they're a one chili spice. Now they're going to like a two or a three chili spice, right? And your teenager is, is escalating, or if you're like a lot of teenagers, it's like, bam, they go from like one to five chili spice in a nanosecond. Um, your brain gets triggered into a state of fight or flight, 
So, which is normal, totally natural and normal. Also based on how you were raised. When, because you go to a couple things. Tell me if I'm wrong here. You go to feeling unsafe because perhaps when you were a child, when your parents were emotionally unregulated, angry, sad, really, really high, joyful, really low, depressed, whatever it was, they were not regulated in their, in their emotions, that felt frightening for you. It felt scary, it felt um, dangerous for you. That's how it felt for me, it was very dangerous. Um, and so my brain would go to a triggered state of fight or flight and in, okay, I can't do this anymore. I got this. Um, my brain would go to a state of fight or flight and in that place, I go on the defense and kind of the offense at the same time. <laughs> it's possible. Your, your teens coming at you, they are unregulated, okay? You go, you're, you're getting triggered into a state of fight or flight. Now, let's be honest. It's not really pleasant when your teenager's coming at you. Like, it's hurtful. This person that you have sacrificed so much for, you've given so much for, and they're coming at you with, um, you know, sometimes intentionally cruel, rude, mean, um, or just plain disrespectful remarks. It's very hurtful. I, t I totally understand that as well. When you get triggered by that, because that's what happened for you when you were a child, is the moment someone shows up as disrespectful or hurtful, you get unregulated. So now you are in a state of fight or flight. You are in the defense and the offense. So the defense is um, you maybe verbally, um, verbally you're like, you know, don't talk to me like that or et cetera. Ver defense could be that you just turn around and walk away. Um, defense could be like you remove yourself from the situation, but in not really a healthy way. Um, defense can be that you come back with an equally cutting remark which is where I move to offense. You're also on the offense because you're trying to shut them down. They are unregulated. You are triggered in a state of fight or flight, which so are they. The, the teen brain is almost always in a mild state of fight or flight, okay? And then you're in a state of fight or flight. So now you're, I explain the defense, so now you're on the offense and the offense is essentially to shut them down. Shut them down using an overuse of power and authority to shut them down. So it might sound like, put a heck yeah in the comments if you've said this. Don't talk to me like that, young lady or young man or whatever. Don't you talk to me like that. Okay, so that's defense, could be also offense. Could be you go to your room until you, until you go to your room until you can come out and say that you know, be respectful. That's offensive. Not, not, I mean on the offense. Okay. I don't mean offensive. I should be careful. <laughs> I meant you're on the offense, right? Because you are attempting to regain control of the situation because your brain is triggered in that state of fight or flight because your teenager is now not regulated which is what Christy is saying in her comment, okay? So um, I'm just gonna say here again, like where's the line of basic manners when they are snapping at you, biting off your heads, you know, screaming at you, etc. Okay, so, um, so that is, that's kind of probably what's happening, if that, that describes that. Now, key point here, well, this is multifaceted, I said. Here's why the defense... Now, okay, I'm really cautious on this. If you grew up in an environment where when your parents were emotionally escalated, it was dangerous for you and very, and frightening, and I personally really relate to that. I grew up in a home like that. Um, I understand you would go on the defense and like leave. And I get that. And I, and I see you and I deeply love you, and I also want you to know that healing is possible. That is called trauma, and, and you don't need to live with it. There's therapy, there's lots of other modalities to help you 
to not be so afraid and hijacked when your teenager is in a hijacked state, okay? And then there's the state where um, of that, that offensive where you're now needing power, control, and authority over them to shut that down immediately, okay? So it doesn't work because your teenager's brain is not capable. So that's the reason number one. The reason that saying to your teenager, like, where are your manners? You will not talk to me like that. The reason that that whole thing doesn't work is because you have an expectation. And I'm going to say this really clearly. It's because there's no training for this. You were never told this. I'm pretty certain. So this is not like about intelligence or how much you love your child. I will never question that ever. I wasn't taught this either until I went and did my coach training and certification and years of research and dealt raise a child with ADHD and autism spectrum disorder and I have ADHD and we triggered each other all the time. It was just a hot mess, okay? Your teenager's brain does not have the capacity to simply just flip back. Just don't talk to me like that, you know, Hey, those that's getting spicy. They they do not have the capacity to simply regulate on a dime because you said so. So all the power, authority and control in the world does not overcome the science of what is going on in your teenager's brain. Now, if you've taken any of my programs or watched any of my videos, you know, you're going to know this, but I'm going to say it again real quick, okay? The teenage brain, this is the Dr. Daniel Siegel hand model of the brain. This is the amygdala, all of the hot, spicy, five chili emotions, they're in there, okay? This is your prefrontal cortex, okay? So it's nicely, your, your amygdala is really like, sitter, like the center of your brain. It's like right in the middle there, okay? And this is your executive function, which gives you, this is an adult brain, executive function which gives you impulse control emotional regulation um filtering like is this am i reacting overreacting why is this important critical analysis um self-reflection that they don't have that that they don't have it they're not being insulin or trying to just like literally defy you and be just they don't have it their brain a teenage brain on a good day is like this. Their prefrontal cortex physically is not formed. It takes like three to four years. It's doing this massive growth phase in there, okay? The software for this puppy, yeah, the brakes, this is the brakes. This is the gas pedal. <laughs> brakes, gas pedal. They're all gas pedal. The brakes, the, the software for the prefrontal cortex does not fully form our latest sciences until 28 years old. Now, does that mean they're going to be explosive until the day they turn 28? No, it's just a learned process, okay? Their amygdala, see how it's not protected? It's not protected. They are always raw and spicy because everything feels life-threatening. It's like being a turtle in the world without a shell or like a crab when they molt and they hide because their life is in imminent danger by everything. Uh, uh, crawling over a sharp rock could be life ending for them because they don't have a shell. Their shell hasn't hardened. So a teenager is highly emotionally reactive um, and, and is all gas pedal. No brakes, no brakes. That is a function scientifically of the teen brain, okay? So by you expecting them to regulate on a dime, first of all, most adults can't do that. Your teenager can't, they can't do it, okay? They, they, they cannot do it. There are the three R's. This is what I want you to take from this video, okay? The three R's of how you must work with a teen brain. And then I'm gonna get back to, this is, this is going around to Christy's question, okay? When you are asking your teenager, where are your manners? Don't talk to me like that. We don't talk to each other like that in this household. Let's be respectful of each other. I'm giving you respect. You owe me respect. 
What you're saying to your teenager, what you're trying to do is reason with them, right? How many of you have attempted to reason with an escalated teen? Or wait for it, an escalated toddler in a temper tantrum and you're trying to reason with them? How many of you, put in the comments, put me in the comments if you have tried this. Have you tried to regulate or to reason with an escalated teen or an escalated toddler? It's a lot like trying to talk to a drunk. It's a lot like trying to reason with someone who is high or drunk or because yes, 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 right? Trying to reason with an escalated brain and the toddler brain is very similar to the teenage brain. You're trying to reason with a brain that is, nah, they, they, they don't have it. They, it's like going into a, to an ice cream shop that sells vanilla and chocolate and they're like super clear, only vanilla and chocolate here. And you go in and you stand at the counter and you get pissed mad at them because they don't have the maple pecan that you want. And you're an ice cream store, so you should sell maple pecan because every ice cream store shows maple pecan. And they're like, it says right on the sign that we only sell chocolate and vanilla. And you're like, but you should, do you, do you, like, do you see the madness? Do you get the madness in that of trying to reason with an escalated brain? or an unregulated, this is an unregulated brain, this is an escalated brain. The prefrontal cortex required for reasoning is offline. This is true in a teen brain, this is true in a child's brain, this is true in an adult brain. You're attempting to reason with a computer that isn't plugged in, no Wi-Fi, spinning blue circle, no connection, not there. Okay, it doesn't work. That is why demanding your teenager starts being respectful with you or getting upset with them for being unregulated or escalated is, is not true because you cannot reason with them. You, so then you try to relate, right? So these are the three R's. You try reasoning with them. Well, I can tell you that doesn't work and it's really frustrating. And when reasoning with them doesn't work, you will always, if you don't have this information, but now you do, you will always go to a state of defense or offense needing greater levels of control. Because you're assuming they are not reasoning with you intentionally out of a need to defy and disrespect you. And that assumption right there is gonna turn this into a horrible cycle for both of you, okay? So when reasoning doesn't work, you try and relate to them, right? And you're like, okay, like, look, I get, okay, I get you're upset. I get that you're angry. Like you, you give them a little bit, like a breadcrumb of something, you try and relate to them like, yeah, yeah, like we've all had that happen, okay? You've had a bad day, I get it. You know, I know you had a hard test today, but that still doesn't, that still doesn't mean you can talk to me. So then you go right back to, you give them, you're trying to, um, reasoning doesn't work, so you give them some breadcrumbs of relating to them. Like maybe a little bit of like, a little bit of empathy or like a little bit of validation or whatever, and then you go right back to, yeah, yeah, but I want you to snap to it. <laughs> no. No, no, it might work, but it most often won't. Just relating, reasoning doesn't work because this high level is not available. Relating is getting closer, but you're still not there. In order for your teenager uh, or your young adult to show you the manners and respect that you are showing them, what they need is help to yeah, empathy, but so well said. Like, I'm going to give you empathy and validation because I'm trying to relate to you, but will you come on already? <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. What, you, what your teenager needs is to regulate. So these are the three R's of the science of how the brain works. They need to regulate first before they can relate so they can reason. 
That's how the brain works. It's how the brain develops. So, so I want to go back a, sec a second here to Katie's comment. Okay, this is why I want to bring this up. Where is the line between actually teaching manners, like speaking respectful to, to other people, um, and always like creating this emotional safety. And, and I love this point because I know on social media here all the time, parents like you, like from people like me, you're always like, Hey, you have to like be emotional safe, create emotional safety. Yeah. Yeah. But when does my teen, when do I get to tell my teen to just stop it enough, stop it right now. And don't speak to me like that. You do, but you've got to regulate, help them regulate first so that you can reason or excuse me regulate first so that they can relate so they're, that now they're starting to relate and then they reason that is the steps that brings their brain back online now a teen brain is never going to be like this a teen brain on a good day is like that okay but at least you can bring it down a little bring it down a few chilies right from a five chili to maybe a one chili <laughs> spice okay so it's it's quite counterintuitive because what you and I were taught was that the moment someone else gets unregulated, you now have permission to be unregulated. So you're trying to reason with them. And when that doesn't work, you go to defense or you go to offense because you need power, control, and authority to shut that down because your brain is triggered in a state of fight or flight. You and I were not taught these things. You and I were not taught these things. So please don't be hard on yourself. Um, these are learned skills. So I'm gonna go, uh, this is what I'm talking about with Katie's comment, okay? What she's hearing, I think, which I understand is this lecturing kind of um, uh, really obtuse messages a lot on social media about you've gotta be emotional safe, but you've gotta be emotionally safe, but you gotta bleh, bleh. What Katie I think is referring to is what she's hearing from other people all the time is to help your child to regulate first. Emotional safety, psychological emotional safety is scientifically proven to be required to help your teenager to regulate. So when you are triggered by them, that's not emotionally safe because you're taking this personally. You're taking this as a personal cut against you as a person and as a parent and how dare they and blah, blah, blah. So that story has you hijacked, right? So this is about learning how to stay regulated yourself when they need it the most because it's not personal. This is a function, a, a physiological function of their brain. So when you can remain calm when they are unregulated, you help them to regulate, okay? And when they regulate by staying calm, then, they, then you are beginning to relate to them. That's where empathy and validation are awesome. Once you have the emotional safety of them being regulated. Now, is a teenager always gonna get back down and regulate? No because their brain does not yet have the development to do so. So you could try this and be like, well, Allie, that was useless. They just kept yelling at me and it didn't work. Uh-huh. Because remember when you taught your toddler to walk? Do, do, think back for a sec. Do you remember when you taught your toddler to walk? Did they walk on the first day? Did they walk on the first try? Uh, I'm going to guess when your child learned to walk, you probably picked them up from falling and put them back on their feet and encouraged them and said, you got this, try again. It's okay. About a thousand times. I'm just guessing. That was my experience. It was about a thousand times. Your teenager's brain is learning self-regulation. So if you, this isn't just about modeling respect and remodeling, modeling kindness and manners. That, that's the intellectual part of this, yes. But if you are modeling regulation when you are feeling a lot of emotions, regulation means 
Are you able to be with escalated emotions and not project them on other people or break things or hurt things, hurt yourself? Are you, are you modeling that you can effectively express, name, express, and articulate those feelings when you're feeling escalated? You take ownership of them, you ask for what you need, self-advocacy to help you regulate so that you are, so someone knows how to relate to you so then you can go to the reasoning state which is, is there um, an action required, restitution, is there learning, how, is there, how are we gonna correct, all of those things that you're wanting them to jump into immediately, okay? Um, absolutely take a break and regulate yourself but you need to tell your teenager that you're taking a break to regulate yourself because if you don't, that's emotional abandonment. That's what we got. That's what a timeout is. You sit there in that stare and don't talk to me until you can, like, that's, it's like, look, I love you and I wanna be here. I, I'm gonna take a five minute break and I'm gonna come back and you better come back at four minutes and 59 seconds. So teaching your teenager to regulate is what you are actually asking me. And this is what parents are saying, like, ah, emotional safety, this is building snowflakes. Their boss isn't gonna do that for them. No, you're right, they're not. And that is why this is what is so important about you teaching your teenager these steps, regulate, relate, and reason, then reason. Because by modeling this, which it's going to take time, my friends, I wish, just like your toddler walking, I could tell you it would happen on the first day. There'd be no more black eyes, stitches, scrapes, bumps, but that's not true and we all know it. So this is about you learning to regulate, relate, and reason yourself at a conscious level so that they can, um, they can see you regulate, they learn to regulate, relate, and reason themselves so they don't need their boss to do it for them. This whole like, oh, like, well, that's not raising them for the real world. They're going to get crushed in the real world. No, it's not. When you teach them this skill at home, self-regulation at home, they don't need other people to do it around them and have the capacity internally, it's called emotional intelligence, to deal with asshats in the world and not have to lose their crap. They just go, eh, you're having a bad day, right? So to self-regulate when you are being treated respectfully, it does mean boundaries. That's critical. I would never ask you to stand in the face of being treated like absolute crap, crap with your teenager for the purpose of helping them regulate. That is a hell no. And I love your teenager too. So you've got to, so it's regulate, re regulate, relate, and then reason but yes, you've got to have boundaries in that too. And does this happen overnight? No. However long it took you to teach your, te your toddler like to learn to walk, multiply that by three or four for a teenage brain. Because, not because they're slow, not because they're stupid, because that is literally how long it is taking their brain just to finish growing all the new gray matter and the hardware that they're doing, let alone build right at the same time all the new software that their brain is getting, okay? So Katie, I hope this has been helpful for you as far as understanding that just being an emotionally safe place is not being permissive. It is not about being placating them and it's not about allowing them to treat you with disrespect. It is understanding that what you are doing is teaching their brain to regulate so they learn the skill of self-regulation so they don't need to speak spicy or be disrespectful. They're still gonna be angry because we're allowed to have emotions, right? But you're, when your teenager's screaming, I don't know at you, Katie, it's because they literally don't know because their brain is offline. This reasoning part, it's offline. They can't answer. And by the way, if you are pressing your teen to, ans to answer why they're upset, what are you feeling? Why are you upset? They don't know. They don't know. Yes, this is gonna be saved on my profile immediately. If you would like more assistance with this, that is literally what every single one of all my videos is about, 
regulate, relate, and reason. It is what all of my parenting programs are about. And you can start right now after I post this or you, uh, I'll put a link below in YouTube. Um, if you're here on Instagram, if you tap on my name, then there's a, a couple links in my profile. I have a free masterclass um, that will get you started on my proven framework to, to creating this mutual respect and trust with genuine connection and all of that requires all of this knowledge and these steps to get there, okay? You can absolutely do this. Um, just tap on my name and or put a comment below this after I post it and I'll get you to that free masterclass. It's a great place to have a start. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm so grateful for every one of you. Um, if you liked this, I would love if you would um, share it with all other parents of teens who just might be struggling with the same thing. All right. Much love and respect. I will see you again in a few days. Bye.